So do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you yourself will be just like him. And then the next verse says, be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools, or they will become wise in their own estimation. And so it's just interesting, like, you have to have this um, ability to discern. Sometimes it's right to correct someone, and sometimes it's not right to correct someone. <laughs> it, yeah, and so having discernment, two truths and ten, I just, I, I was thinking about that before I came in. And it's true that, um, yeah, anyway, we just need the wisdom of God and his word and we need right now things because it can be a truth like Bo was saying on this side of the line and then you step over to this side of the line and it's not where you're supposed to go and flow and follow. So anyway, this is exciting. I feel like I, I want to be seated, but I do better standing, but I just want to be like, this is so cool to be around everybody and all your beautiful faces. And it's like, we are fellowshipping together in Christ. Like we have come together for God today on a beautiful Saturday. And so I just think it's exciting. And we are the church. This is the church communing with one another. Everybody gets some snacks and everybody feeling good and relaxed. (laughs) Go on. So I I felt like God gave me a word to talk about and it was pursuing him and in like the pursuit of God. But I also felt like, and I'm only doing this, this makes me a little uncomfortable, but I'm doing it because I felt like God told me to introduce myself and who I am. Because I feel like we know each other so well, but we don't actually always know people's situations and stories and who they are and where they come from. So I apologize if it bores you, if most of you know me, but um, (laughs) I'm Gina. I am a Jesus lover. (laughs) I'm a child of God. Very first thing in my life is that I'm a daughter of the king. But I I actually grew up Catholic, and I went to Catholic school, and I went to Catholic church, and I had a Catholic family. And um, my mom actually knew Kathy, and she would come to, like, some prayer meetings at day spring. So she kind of prayed in tongues. It was kind of that quiet thing. She never really told us what it was, but she taught us about Jesus. And um, But we just grew up Catholic. And anyway, it's written in my baby book that I accepted the Lord at age three. I took an altar call at age three, and she said it was totally on my own. So I c- I've always remembered knowing the Lord in my life. Like, I've always talked to him and believed in him. Um, but it wasn't until a little bit later in my life because, you know, you grow up and you think, oh, I've got to do these worldly things and have these worldly accomplishments, go to school, become a mom, a wife, you know, all these things, um, live this American dream. And then it's like, you meet Jesus, (laughs) you die and he starts to come alive in you. And, um, yeah, so I knew Bo and Katie for a really long time. We were friends way before um, he, you know, was walking with Jesus. And he got really excited and saved and was like, Gina, want to come to church with us? <laughs> and then we started going to this church. And it was like I, st- at the same time, just went to the Christian bookstore one day and bought a Bible and would, like, open it up at night and kind of, like, read a couple verses from the Psalms and Proverbs. And I look back, and I see that God was drawing me but I didn't, like, understand it then. Like, I didn't know the word. But I can remember I would, like, read the Bible and be like, oh, my gosh, that thing that I believe is in there? And it was, like, it validated stuff that I was taught and brought into and just things that I kind of came to know, but I didn't know the word, you know. And, um, oh, that coffee smells really good. <laughs> Fresh. Fresh coffee. So when sunburn started, I actually was like, I don't know, this is a little weird. I'm not really sure about that. (laughs) And um, School of Passion, I signed up for it. And man, just got pushed into the word and like knew, got thrown into the word and the spirit and started getting free and kind of knowing the Lord. And it was just changed everything in my life. So Anyway, fast forward a couple of years, I went to um, Brian Guerin's school, Ascend Academy, and graduated from there and was ordained and all this stuff, but um, this is, like, exciting for me. So, anyway, I I felt like God wanted me to sort of talk about that, and then out of a word that was given to me, I started doing these Good News Girl podcast things that I have, and I do, and um, didn't even really know what podcasts were, 
didn't even listen to them. <laughs> and God gave me this blueprint to do them. <laughs> I had this stuff like flowing in me. Like I had these words and these things to release and this revelation and I didn't know what to do with it. And then this, this word that I got, um, pushed me into learning how to put it into a place and have it. And so it's been kind of a way for me to learn God. Like how do you, uh, in nursing school, they told us, um, watch one, do one, teach one. And it's the truth. Like how else do you get thrown into something without stepping into it? And so while I was doing these things and searching things out, it was teaching me and helping me understand God and his word. And, um, so anyway, I'm also a nurse, which is, probably all of you know all that, but um, I'm here today. I, God gave me this word about pursuing him, the pursuit of God, but what I'm here to do is to throw you to Jesus, <laughs> to give you the word and to step into him, the word and the spirit working together, and it says that the spirit is our teacher, so he, yes, he uses people to teach you, but following him, if something jumps out at you, just grabbing hold of it, learning about it in the scripture, watch teachings on it, chew it up, make it your own, teach it to somebody else. That's the, what the teacher does. And um, anyway, I have a verse <laughs> um, about the teacher. Where is that? Yeah, Christ... Uh, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. And I think that's really cool because that's John 14, 26. Um, the helper, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and remind you. So God's word is eternal forever. So he spoke it out and the spirit can remind you of it when you need it. And so that's what's really exciting about the word and the spirit. So the word and the spirit work together. And uh, I always think of these scales, you know too much word you cannot even understand this thing it's like death if you don't have the spirit too much spirit you start getting really weird and so word (laughs) and spirit work together but both of them are they're married they're one and um so I come to you in the word and in the spirit and what it is is it's power and authority to teach just breaking open the word so I'm excited to be here. That's my introduction, Melody. How are you? <coughs> anyway, um, let's go into this, the pursuit of God. So when I was thinking about pursuing God, what well, it's actually opposite, but the truth is he pursues us. <laughs> and so that's where we have to go from in order to pursue him is understand that he has pursued us. The entire Bible is a story about God pursuing us, sending himself in the form of a man, his only son to try to come and be one with us. I mean, there is no other way of pursuing somebody. Um, but in Ephesians 1, 4, it says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Chosen before the foundation of the world in him. Um, in Romans 5.8, it talks about how while we were still sinners, he died for us. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my gosh, talk about pursuing someone. He's literally like, Everything we, st- we, everything we are before Jesus is against who he is. And he's like, I'm going to die for you to draw you to me. In John 6:44, it says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. So the father draws us. It's like that magnet. Oh, I just thought it was a good idea to go buy a Bible and start reading it at night sometimes. It was the Lord drawing me like a magnet, you know bringing me into my whole destiny, even though I'm over here, he's like, that's okay. You know, the magnet's not as strong up here. It's just, we're going to slowly bring you. And um, anyway, am I going too fast? I tend to do that. Okay. <laughs> oh, and John twelve thirty two, it says, I will draw all people to myself. <laughs> And so he is the one, you know, 
it gets a little, we really want people to come to these meetings and we really want people to um, get saved. And, you know, there's this rest where you can lay your head down at night and say, Father, you'll draw them. You'll draw them in your time. I mean, there's just right timing for things. And, and under heaven, it says, it says, Bo was talking about that, God's outside of heaven. Yeah. In Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time for everything under heaven. So, yeah, the timing thing is a big deal here. Yeah. To him, it's all the same. Yeah. Mm, so good. So timing is big, but it's, um, it's just a little thing to God. Um, but he literally cannot deny us. So, you know, we say, come Holy Spirit. My gosh, he's, everything he's done is reaching for us. And we're like, come Holy Spirit. He's come, <laughs> you know, he's here. <laughs> but it's true, he can't deny your hunger. He really can't because all he's doing is standing there like, come on, come on, son. Come on, daughter. Just always present, always there. Ellie likes it. Ellie's tracking. <laughs> <laughs> um, when uh, when Jesus gets baptized by John which is still a mystery to me like Jesus Christ is like can you baptize me John <laughs> imagine <laughs> talk about humility you know but the heavens open and he says this is my son in whom I'm well pleased so uh, Jesus pleases the father if Jesus is in us He's pleased by us. It's his great pleasure. We are his great pleasure because we're in Christ. Christ is in us. So I feel like people are always like, I, I just want to please God. Christ in you pleases God. It's, it's amazing. But, <laughs> yeah, we're working out our stuff, but Christ in us pleases him. It's just amazing, huh? He pursues us. And then we can pursue him. <laughs> because he pursues us, we pursue him. Um, in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, He became sin for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness in God. In him. It's just crazy. So our pursuit of him is completely eternal. Like, it will never, the more you learn about God, the less you know about God. The more you learn about God, the less you know. You'll get up to a mountaintop, and you'll see the next mountaintop. And then you get over here, and it's another mountaintop. But you look back, and you're like, that's five mountaintops I climbed. <laughs> but the, um, I asked Bo this verse a couple weeks ago, the, the beings that are flying around the throne looking at him, I forget the verse, but they see something different every time they fly past. It's so yes, it is our goal to gain knowledge. It's our goal to get understanding, wisdom that all comes in Jesus Christ. But we we'll never be able to fathom who He is. So pursuing Him, you can't get bored. <laughs> if you're bored, shame on you. <laughs> That's something I used to say um, when I would work when I worked at uh, the School of Nursing when we would talk about the school to people I would say if you're a nurse and you're bored it's shame on you because there's so many things you can do but it's even bigger <laughs> there is a limitation in that there's no limitation in God I mean he is so mighty there's just you can't he's God um, so our pursuit of him is eternal and then you know talk about humility actual humility is knowing what Christ did for us and who he is and living in that it's not a specific behavior or action. It's literally knowing what Christ did and that he lives inside of us. So anyway, I was on to about how it's important to get wisdom and knowledge and understanding. So I'm going to sign, I'm going to sign something. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to sign it to you to check out Proverbs chapter two. So good. <laughs> yeah. It is so good. <laughs> I'll just start it off and I'll wet your noodle. Yeah. 
My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom. By the way, just right now, incline your ear to the Lord and pray for my left ear to open up. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Um, Apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. It's right there. And this whole, this whole chapter talks about, I mean, it's just an incredible chapter. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Yeah, it's just so good. And so, yeah, we can actually get all this stuff. But you remember that Christ... In uh, Isaiah 11, 1, it talks about wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. But it's Christ. They're talking about Christ. You know, I used to, I used to, I used to devour the Proverbs, and I still do. But I thought it was everything. I had to learn all these things about the Proverbs, and I loved it. And then the Word revealed Jesus to me. And he is, it says it in... Um, or Second Corinthians, it says that he himself became wisdom for us, Christ. And then I, wrote, I read this verse, and this is just me flowing spontaneously, um, in Colossians 2, 3, in Christ is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So no, you don't need to understand and act on every single thing in the Proverbs. You just need Christ, huh? Whoa. <laughs> Because in him is hidden the treasures. I mean, treasures. Does that not excite people? Who as a kid thinks about finding a treasure? Christ is a treasure filled with wisdom and knowledge. Oh, my gosh. And then, okay, so then I wanted to go over to stay in this pursuit of God thing. Nuh-uh. No, but at least I know. He was preaching a, he a was different one. <laughs> Does anyone remember where the book of Job is? Oh, there it is. Job 38. This is another assignment, okay, because I can't read the whole thing. Because I don't like to, to talk a long time. I like to get that word in there. And, but Job 38. Okay, so Proverbs 2 says that we can find the knowledge of God, right? Yep. Melanie, what are you whispering about? I love it. No whispering in class. Send a note. If you send a note, I'm going to have you read it in front of the class. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm the worst culprit of that, so. Um, Okay, imagine God coming up and talking. This is God talking to Job. (laughs) He says to Job, who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Can anyone answer that question? Where were you? Well, Ephesians just told us we were in him, but tell me if you have understanding who determined its measurements. This goes on to say God's asking him all these questions, basically like you can't figure me out, but keep trying. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this far you've come, but no further in your proud. Like he's talking about like when I set the water in place and told its boundaries how far it can go. What were you doing when I did that? Um, over in verse 31, it says, can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades or loose the belt of Orion? Can you bring out Maseroth in its season? Or can you guide the great bear with its cubs what do we care if people are watching these astrology signs and stuff I mean it offends Christians in such a way yeah but I'm saying God is bigger and he made those things up there I mean like Bo was talking about just because you disagree with somebody doesn't mean that you have to step out of a conversation or get all funny about it and I mean God's like I made these things man I don't know I just think it's cool but I don't read signs or anything like that. So please don't hear what I'm not saying. <laughs> um, Stop. Tracy's going to talk about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's cool. All the planets aligned a couple weeks, like a week ago or something. 
What does that mean, Tracy? Because, I mean, I didn't bring that up. Okay. Will you do it later? Oh, sure. Or do you want me to No, go ahead. Okay, so I was praying with um, some beautiful ones that I am mentoring, and all of a sudden I saw when I came here one time and they had this huge, as you're coming across the bridge into, into Pittsburgh, this oh. sign that said Confluence. And it was, you know, that became part of the word that the Lord had me release. So I was hearing that, and I saw it again while we were praying. So I went to look up confluence. The word of the day was syzygy, S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y. And I couldn't, I, I had to stop there. I'm like, what is syzygy? I knew the Lord was speaking. And it's when three planets or more come together in an alignment, and so I've been, we've been pressing in and praying into this because we believe that there are some celestial, because it says celestial planets, you know, like the earth, the moon, a star, or a planet. But we believe God is releasing some things into the earth. So we're pressing into this because he saw three. And then one of these intercessors this week sent me a thing and said, Tracy, five this week. She saw five, so, yeah, so, and I meant to look it up, but I've been <laughs> in so much research with the Lord, but this excitement, so I'm going to tell you, I don't know fully, but I'm looking and I'm watching, and that's something when you're hearing something like this where you have three people who are, and then others, God's doing something, and I truly believe he's going to do something here this weekend that's going to astound us. And so I want to keep hearing what you're teaching because you are unlocking something in this whole pursuit. And Gina, you just need to go for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Proverbs, or Job 38 is a long chapter, but something about that caught my eye about it. I, I wasn't even, that's crazy, so. Some, the Lord wants to speak about it. Like, we don't have to be afraid of um, the, the new age that has, has twisted it and made it wrong. We don't have to be afraid of that. What if God wants to speak to you through the signs in the sky? <laughs> I mean, he does. And that's why the word and the spirit have to work together. And it's so true because you can't walk around saying this is a sign and this is a sign. And I had a dream to go here and I had a dream to go there. You'll run around in circles. As soon as you get founded in the word and you know the word, you're not confused about, well, I thought God told me to do this and now I'm here and I'm supposed to, to not be there anymore. And as soon as I get to where God said to go, he hurries up and tells me to go. No, I mean, it's the word that you need to balance out this. Listen, I am the biggest dreamer. I mean, I dream like crazy, and I have tons of really powerful, accurate dreams. Um, but I also have the word to, to balance it out so that I'm not going crazy chasing every star that shows up. And yet we bless it. You know, it's it's we bless that that's a thing. So anyway, in the pursuit of him, you end up finding him. <laughs> <laughs> and what you realize is what you were pursuing ends up coming up higher and then higher. And you're like, I can't believe that's what I was thinking then. Well, guess what? What you were thinking then is what helped you get to that next place. So it's okay, you know. Um, anyway, in him is where there's rest and there's peace, harmony. That's where provision is, favor. Um you know, it's okay to have goals. Like, God literally puts desires in our heart. Like, he does it. And he cares about it. He cares about the smallest of things. Ephesians 3.20 tells us that um, he can do exceedingly abundantly more than what we think or act. And I always challenge people, what are you thinking? 
because he wants to do more than what you're thinking. So if you're thinking, you know, down there, um, so it's, anyway, it's his good pleasure. I, I was talking about this, that God said he's well pleased in, his, in his, the son. Jesus is what pleases God. We're in him. So it pleases him to give us good things. It's, it's true. But it's something Bo was touching on. Crying out after something specific will never get you there. It's like it's added whenever your eyes are on him. I'm going to get there. But um, it's just always back to pursuing him. And so anyway, um, he can do so much. But it's, it's in the end of that verse, it says, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus. So it's always about pursuing him. Like, yeah, he wants to give you really good things in his glory, like in him. So a great Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. But it's, it's a beautiful thing, but it's delight yourself in the Lord. It's looking at him first. And all of a sudden you start getting these things. Um, yielding to him, you know, is, is massive. It's just laying everything down, not doing it what's best for me, <laughs> but understanding he knows better. Um, surrendering it all to him, you know. So it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. That's Galatians 2.20. Um, he gave himself for me, for you, for us. Oh, my gosh. So um, I, I just feel like taking steps in your own understanding or strength or doing what's best for you, you kind of end up in a mess or you're walking around that same circle all the time, you know. And then all of a sudden you start to yield to him and take your eyes off of that situation that's just swirling and and looking at him and things start falling into place. Um, So I actually have an example of this, honestly. When I was younger, I had no ability to draw, like no artistic ability, couldn't even draw the house, you know. My brother's an artist. Both of my brothers are super creative. My parents are creative, builders, really good at this kind of stuff. I never had that, and I want to say something to you. That's okay. (laughs) It is okay to not be something. In fact, when you know who you are in God, who you're not does not matter. And so you can look at someone who is good at the thing you're not good at and bless them and cheer them on and excite them because, you know, so it really is okay to not have this. So that's not what I'm talking about. But I was pressing into God and pressing into God, and I started, like, praying in the Spirit all the time. I start getting these ideas for these crafts and I literally started creating all this stuff (laughs) and it was like good I was like what and the thing of that is is I wasn't sitting there asking God make me an artist God help me be good at crafts it was just I was pursuing him and it was a gift that he just gave to me Julie thought that was really funny But what I'm not saying is don't ask, seek, and knock because that's biblical. Pursuing him for things, asking for things, persevering for things is also the God thing. But what I'm trying to tell you is when your pursuit is on him, things you can't even imagine, he just hands to you as a gift for no reason. Not because I was going to go become some professional artist, but it was just his wink. You can do anything in me. In your weakness... I can create through you because believe me, (laughs) I can't, still can't draw the house. (laughs) You guys know what I'm talking about? The house everyone makes (laughs) with the tree and the path. (laughs) Okay. Um, Not even sure where I'm at on these notes. I'm looking at them, but I don't know. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So, A couple of weeks ago, I was on a steroid for something with my tooth, and I couldn't sleep, and I got this head cold, and I was just, like, not sleeping. (laughs) And I'm a sleeper. Give me my... God made me a sleeper. I don't stay up all... I mean, I'm just someone who sleeps. (laughs) So it was, like, a week, and I hadn't slept, and I'm like, I have this head cold. I'm like, God, I just need to sleep. I know I'll get better if I sleep. Now, please understand that sleep is, is... It does help you heal your body. It is very important. I love sleep. But God whispered to me and said, you don't need sleep. You need me. And I was like, oh, wait, 
Christ lives in me. <laughs> so I need Christ. He's my heal. Like, he's my healer. He's my rest. As soon as I understood that, I slept like a baby. But it was amazing to understand. I'm not here saying you don't need sleep because believe me, I'm sleeping my eight hours. <laughs> I don't care what you're doing, but I'm sleeping my eight hours. But the truth was I didn't need sleep. I needed him. He was my source. And so putting my eyes on him as my source, pursuing him is where I ended up, you know, getting the sleep. But it was he was just correcting what I was pursuing, if that makes sense. So it's okay to ask yourself, what am I pursuing? Who am I pursuing? What am I willing to do in that pursuit? And listen, if you're sitting here today on a Saturday, I know what you're pursuing. <laughs> so, but I mean, it helps me stay on track. What am I pursuing here? What is the goal? Is my eye on Christ or is my eye on this messy situation that I'm not seeing any change in? Just going around and around and around again. Look, listen, plans, formulas, programs are great. They are great. <laughs> they are great. But I'm going to tell you one time someone gave me this book on how to do deliverance and I'm like, <laughs> wait. What do I have to do again? Like, that's, it's not even in the Bible. I'm not, do, I'm not knocking people that are doing that, but I'm sitting there praying for the person to get delivered, and this other person's like, wait a minute. Did you ask what it was called? And I was like. But this, this goes for everything. This goes for formulas on, on health. Like, I mean, there's people that don't know Jesus that can take care of their bodies and discipline their bodies and have perfect health and eat every single thing right. And then their whole world can blow up because they end up with some terrible thing that they spent their whole life trying to avoid because they don't have God. So programs are awesome and they work and they're re God can use formulas to set people free. It's true. Why are you guys still laughing at me? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. I can't even see you, Sam. This isn't good. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just, I'm just making a point that pursuing God is so much more important than pursuing every single right thing that, that you put in your mouth. I mean, I know people who are paralyzed from going to the store because they just, like, are so worried about, you know, I mean, my friends my friends from high school were, were just texting and they're like, who do you think is going to be the first one to die? And I'm like, well, I'm eternal, so I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like, oh, this one's going to be living forever. She's like in perfect shape and has, you know, everything and they're getting Botox and all this stuff and I'm just like, you know, awesome. But what about Jesus? <laughs> you know, nothing wrong with doing any of that stuff. Nothing. Um, but it's just the pursuit. It goes back to who are you pursuing? What are you pursuing? It being God instead of I'm going to hide and not go around anybody and never have a cold and where, you know, it's true. Like, I mean, wisdom is okay. Awesome. You know, as long as it's not masquerading as fear, but I'm saying like, you can do all these things down here under time and just this, you can have this sight that's this way. You know, um, oh my God. I have this perfect behavior from here. And then, like, you don't even know the Lord. And it's like, okay, I know I know some people, um, nobody knows this person at all that has nothing to do with anyone in this community, but this really annoying person that's, like, um, <laughs> loves Jesus. And I'm like, and nobody likes this person. <laughs> and I was like, God, oh, man, I was, like, feeling bad. And I feel like the Lord said, you know, because she fits right in, you know, you were just talking about that, you know, but <laughs> what I'm saying is, who cares? She knows Jesus. Nobody likes her, but she knows Jesus. <laughs> you can have the greatest personality in the world and not know him is all I'm trying to say. And it's like, it's so important. So I'm just saying this about all the different things that the world finds out. You know, you have to do this program and formula and do this. 
when we're in Christ, God can give you these ideas and be like, no, he actually has been doing it with me. Like, don't eat that or get rid of those chemicals that you're using. It's, it's huge. It is God's voice. So there's nothing wrong with those things. I'm just saying being wrapped in this vision of that and not it, the focus is him and pursuing him. So you can do everything to avoid pain and sickness and everything you can, you can practically buy all of it. I mean, Hollywood is looking younger every day, but do they know the Lord? Um, so in Proverbs 16, 9, they, but he's drawing their hearts. You were paying attention, Julie. A plus. <laughs> um, Proverbs 16, 9 says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And so I brought my little drawing board to do a Proverbs 16 little, this is how I think of Proverbs 16. Is your house no. I'll, I'm going to try it though. You know, you're going from A, I'll show everybody, to B. If you look at a map and you're going from A to B, it looks like this. Okay? You're just going from A to B. And then you get in your car to go from A to B. (laughs) And you have to go this way. And then you have to get on a thing. And then you have to go around a bridge. And the road doesn't actually go from A to B. Like, if you walked it, 400 miles it would be straight but you're cutting through people's yards and you're going for a swim through the river and you're going up and you go over here and you come back down and then you get to be (laughs) does anybody know what I'm talking about does that make sense so it looks like you know you're seeking God for something and it's like all I have to do is go from here to there and then you get in the car in the real world experience and you're driving and you have to get on the on-ramp and, oh, wait, this was a river. I have to go through the bridge, and I have to go through a tunnel. Wait a minute. I'm going this way, and B's over here? Well, you're not at A, though. Even though it looks like you're going back to A to go to B. So it's backwards. It's confusing. It's longer than you think. <laughs> um, okay. Thanks for letting me draw. <laughs> um, but anyway... Commit your, wor- your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established, it says in Proverbs 16.3. Putting him first and pursuing him makes your mind straight. And then you do do those formulas and those plans and you get healthier in this way and that way. But it's because your eye was on him and he's like, here, here, sleep's a gift, my child. I created it to restore your body and help you heal. But you recognize that you needed me and I'm your source. And it's no longer you that lives. It's me inside of you. Mm. Mm. We're going to get out for our break. <laughs> and Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen it says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm, finding him, my goodness. Him is everything. Heals our bodies, sets us free. Instead of pursuing for freedom, we're pursuing him and we get freedom. Instead of pursuing favor, we look for him and we get favor. Instead of pursuing all the things that we need or want. And it looks crazy to the world. It is not spiritual bypassing. It's not It's not. It's not forgetting everything that's going on. But it's saying, I will focus on you, Lord. And guess what? He'll tell you, go into that messy situation again. I'm not taking it away. Go back in there. Because I ask all the time, God, take that away. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go back in there. And you're a little bit changed. And you're triggered again. And you're back around. And anyway, guys, we're all in the same place is the thing. (laughs) No one's arrived yet. They're not walking on the earth if they are. So... We're going to one day, though, be there. <laughs> yeah. And then I just saw this verse this morning, and I, it, I, I'm like, I have to share this because we're, what the, I didn't have it as part of my thing, but Deuteronomy 4.29 says, you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Mm. So can I pray, Bo, or is that okay? 
Yeah, because I just felt like I wanted to pray for any situation, thing, um, big mountain that's not fully surrendered to God because we all have them. We all have them. So, uh, again, stepping off that pedestal, (laughs) truly. Any places that aren't surrendered to him fully and places that we aren't in full pursuit of him. Even if it looks good and it's benefiting us and it's benefiting our body and doing good things for us and, um, you know, we lay that down to you, Lord. Those places where we felt like this is what's best for me and you're saying, but child, <laughs> but child, I know what's best for you. I know your every thought. I know the hair is on your head. Right now, can anyone raise their hand and tell me how many hairs are on your head? And I'm telling you, you know, it's so true. Someone that you love dearly, do you know how many hairs are on their head? He knows the hairs on our head. <laughs> and so, Father, we just lay down that thing and we surrender our lives to you. Recommit it, a recommitting of who what we're doing on this earth, God, because you sent us, you sent us to a sick and dying world. You sent us into the worst of the worst places. And you didn't send us alone. You didn't say, go there without you actually going first. And you love the bride, that word from Tracy. I mean, he loves this sick and dying world. And these people in it. He created them. How how do you hate something you created? How do you dislike something you created? You don't. You love it. You get delight in it. It delights you to see. It gives you good pleasure to see something you created. Even if it's ugly. <laughs> like my drawings. I'm just thinking about myself, you know. Um, creating things. So, yeah, those things that aren't fully surrendered to the Lord, Father, we'd lay them down now. And in your name, God, we receive the gifts that you have for us, the sweet gifts that you want to give to us. Hmm. In Jesus' name. 